Shalom everyone. Today we're going to talk in our class Passover 3 about uh, the proper time to search for Hametz. So when is that time? Everyone must clean his room in preparation for Pesach so that it is Hametz free before the evening of 14 Nisan the night before the Yom Tov. This year, 2024, is going to be Sunday, Sunday day 21st, okay? Uh, this includes the yard and all the rooms in the house, so that he is sure that he has no chametz in his possession during Pesach. And nevertheless, the house is clean and thoroughly clean, what people do every year. And thank God for Passover, because some people don't clean it. If we wouldn't have Chag Pesach, Hashem Irachem, may God have mercy on us. Thank God we have this cleaning. <laughs> so, um, in that case, especially people that have kids, and kids eat and shove and put a chametz anywhere. So definitely after cleaning, we have to check. Now we have to see what do we use in order to check? What blessing are we doing? Why are we leaving uh, pieces of bread around? And so forth and so on. So now Lacha says that he must inspect the pockets of his garments and especially the pockets of the children's clothes and their briefcases, since it is likely for the children to have hametz in those places. It is not necessary to inspect the pockets and briefcases a second time by candlelight on the night of Pesach. So people ch have to check anywhere and everywhere, including your vacuum cleaner. You have to empty the vacuum cleaner. You have to check inside the house and you have to check your car as well. It's highly recommended to clean it up nicely and thoroughly before Pesach. You can do it uh, much before Pesach, a week before, 10 days before. It's fine, <clears throat> as long as you make sure to keep it clean uh, as close as before Pesach, and then do the checking. When you check your house, you check under the same bracha your car slash cars. Anyone who is careful, careful of avoid, to avoid all chametz throughout the festival of Pesach is guaranteed that he will not come to sin throughout the year. Meaning he will have a special um, guard from Shemaim, from heaven, the whole year. Baruch kol Okay, our sages taught, quote, at the start of the evening of the 14th of Nisan, we search for Hametz by the light of a lamp. This means that the proper time for this search is immediately after dusk, or about 20 minutes after sunset. So, you need to check uh, your calendar, you need to check uh, the time at uh, wherever you, uh, you live. Okay, if someone performed the search immediately after sunset and before dusk, he has fulfilled his obligation. It is proper in such a situation for him to continue to search after dusk for at least a few minutes. But he may not recite the blessing again. Bottom line, the best time is at nightfall. Okay, so here in Dallas we will have it. Somewhere around, I would say, 7.30, 7.45-ish. So after davening, we finish around 8.10, we go home immediately and we check. What about having dinner? We usually have dinner after davening, after mariv, after prayer, which will be this year, I'm just throwing numbers, okay, around 8.15 p.m. Should I continue with my routine? dinner and then search for Khamej or before. Conduct the search before. So the Allah is very strict about it. And the Allah says 
starting from half an hour before dusk on that evening, it is forbidden to eat a meal until one has performed the search for chametz. What's the reason for it? The main reason is because people sit down for a meal and they continue with their routine life and they forget, they forget to do, to conduct the chametz search. So we're telling them, no, let me just want to sit here. No, do the chametz uh, uh, search and then eat. Because you have in mind, I can't eat. Why can't eat tonight? Oh, because of the chametz search. And that way he won't, he won't forget. Okay, one may eat up to kabeitza. Uh, like uh, an egg size of bread at this time, but not more than kabeitza. It's about 50 grams. It's about one point. Uh, 75 ounces. Also, one may eat any amount of fruits, vegetables, or rice, even more than kabeitza. It is certainly permissible to drink a cup of tea or coffee. Okay, any questions? No questions? Next. Um, a person who has been appointed to perform the search for chametz in the synagogue may eat a meal once he has performed the search in his own home, although he has not yet performed the search in the synagogue. Uh, another thing to remember, another important halacha, is forbidden to begin any uh, involved task on the evening of the 14th of Nisan, starting from half an hour before dusk. Technically, if someone begins a meal or a task earlier than this time, he may continue eating or working until finishing finishes and only then perform uh, the search. However, if he chooses to interrupt and perform the search, he will certainly receive a special blessing from heaven. So some people still at work, some people doing other stuff, let's say they, they, they're supposed to conduct the search at 8.15, but he started at work sometimes around 6, he's on the middle of it, okay? Or he's in the middle of a meal that he participated earlier than that. So you may continue. If you're stuck in order to conduct the search, you'll get a special blessing. Don't forget tonight, I'm reminding you, remember the two segulot, just remember, we mentioned last week, but Rabbi Chaim Zunfeld cut the hair in order to have... Oh, you prepare. <laughs> That's a good one. You're prepared for there. Wow. I noticed something is, uh, is off today. Okay, so tonight, after nightfall, if you take a haircut, say it. This is for the sake of the holiday, the Yom Tov, then do the haircut, okay? And also light the candles for Rabbi... Nisim Hamitzri Rainen. This is for Parnasa. Good. But if you do, okay, so you do the candles for Parnasa, and this is for to have no headaches the entire year. So Chaim Zunfeld said that. Great Sadiq. Okay. Is there a time frame to light the candle? You have the whole night. The whole night. Yeah, earlier the better. Okay. So just don't forget to do this segulot. Maybe you want to put on your watch, watches as something that uh, will remind you, you know. It's a great thing. You missed it, you have to wait till next year. Okay, next. Uh, what about studying? Studying Torah before conducting the search. Once the time for the search has arrived, it is forbidden to begin a Torah session, Torah study session. Even if someone has a regular schedule to study at that time, every night, one uh, uh, on this night, he must postpone that session until he completes the search of Ochamez. If he begins to study or his study session before dusk, however, he may not interrupt the session to perform the search. Okay. Um, this is between, for you, I mean, it's, 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 it's a self-studying, okay, it's not studying by himself, but if someone um, has a set Torah learning, 
for the majority, for many people. So there is no problem. They can sit down and study. They remind each other, hey guys, see you next time. And uh, don't forget, we're going from here to start to do uh, conduct a Hamid search. No problem. But it's always good to have a reminder. You'll be surprised that many times, how many times people forget. You come after shul, after davening, you forget. It's not something you do every night. It's once a year. So put a sign for yourself. The best method is to prepare the tools before checking the chametz, okay? At home, in the living room. So when you enter the house, you'll see it in front of you. The candle, you see the sidur is ready for blessing. It reminds you to conduct the chametz and the pieces are ready to be spread all over. Now, there is a question. So we learned that this is something you do, you conduct Hamed search on the night af uh, um, after you come back from the synagogue, okay? What if someone came home, he missed time davening at the shul, the synagogue, and now he is asking, Rabbi, should I conduct the search for Hamed? First, or I should do the tefillah, the prayers of Arvit, Ma'ariv, after or before? What, what comes first? The prayers, or you can die the Hamed search before you forget? You're right, you're absolutely right. The prayers come first. Why? Because there's a, there's a time frame for that. Yeah, you can, you can, you can check Hamed for Hamed the entire night. Okay. You can daven, you can pray the entire night. So why praying comes first, okay? Because it's more common. And the Allah has said, well, anything that it's more common gets precedence, okay? It gets first priority. If someone has not recited an Aravit prayer before Das, then at the dusk he should first recite the prayer and then go to conduct the search. It is best if there is someone available to request that the person uh, uh, remind him to go home to conduct the search immediately after he complete the prayer. Okay. Uh, in the case that someone is really really tired, he came from a long journey, or he's come or come after after a long flight. Okay. Uh, he had. Uh, let me just read it here. It'll be faster. If someone returned home from a business trip on the evening of the 14th of Nisan and he feels that he is too exhausted to perform the search uh, uh, with uh, uh, the necessary uh, alertness, he may take a nap before fulfilling this mitzvah. He must instruct, he must instruct his family to wake him up in a half an hour or so and afterward he may drink a cup of coffee or something similar so that he will be fully awake and perform the mitzvah properly. You see, they allow us to, 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 to take a nap, a nap in only maybe 30 minutes, okay? Because you're tired. You don't go down to sleep and wake up in the next morning and forget it. This uh, uh, course of action is permissible only if he returns home early in the evening. If he arrived home late at night when most people retire to bed, for the night, he may not, may not, may not lay down for a nap and uh, rely on his family to wake him up later, since it is likely that they themselves will be asleep before they have a chance to wake him up. Okay. What bracha? What bracha we do? What a special bracha we do before we conduct the chametz? So there is one bracha. Just open your sidurim. In your own sidur, you will find the blessing. Okay, I will just repeat it really quickly. Before beginning the search, one must recite the blessing. Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kiddush Alam Tzadav Tzivanu Al Bi'ur Hamesh May Hashem, our God, King of the Universe, be blessed. Okay, I'm going to skip for the very end. For the destruction, okay, having commanded us to perform the destruction of Hametz. We are just checking the chametz. We're not destroying it yet. But since the process of destruction the chametz started that night, we're saying that bracha 
uh, yada yada yada. He commanded and having commanded us to perform Hametz, uh, sorry, to perform the destruction of Hametz. We do not recite blessing specifically about the act of searching for Hametz, since the act of searching is only a step leading to the goal of reading Hametz from our possession. If someone, someone substitute the words Le'avir uh, Hametz, uh, I'm sorry, Le'va'er Hametz, mean and al Hamez, he has nevertheless fulfilled his obligation. You won't get confused because you guys are reading from the Siddur. Okay? You need to remember that the entire time we're checking for Hametz, we're supposed to be in silent. Now, talking is F, is, uh, because the, the process of checking for Hametz, searching for Hametz, may take. Uh, a, a longer time. It could be some places 15 minutes, 20 minutes, sometimes 2 or 3 hours. Depends on how thorough you, you are. So it's like having a cup of Kiddush, okay, and saying, and then you start to talk. You can't, you can't talk. You have to drink first, right? This is the same. To destroy the Hametz, and then you're talking. You can't. You have to start checking and searching for Hametz. Make sense? Yeah. Mm. But can you talk if you find Hametz? Can you talk after that? After you find? Okay, so wait. So the Lanka said, it is forbidden to speak after reciting the blessing until one begins the search. If someone did interrupt by speaking about some unrelated topic before he begins the search, he will have to recite the blessing over again. During the search, he may speak about anything related to the search. For example, open the door for me, uh, move a little bit, uh, move this object, move this item, because it's related to the search. He must not speak about any other topics until he completes the search and declare the bitul hametz, the no of the hametz, since there are post can rule that even if one interrupts in the middle of a search, it is necessary to repeat the blessing. Wow, we don't repeat the blessing, by the way. Besides, if one will begin unrelated conversation, he will pay less attention to his search. If someone did interrupt with unrelated conversation after having uh, begun the search, he does not repeat the blessing. Since we follow the rule, never to reset a blessing if its necessity is in a doubt. There is any, there is some halachot, some laws that everybody need to be to remember. One of them is this one, is this rule. The rule is a rabbinical law. If you already said the bracha, we don't say it again. Only under some very special circumstances. Okay, you already said the bracha. That's it. That's finished. We already mentioned in the past cases that you have to say the blessing again, okay? But just remember, it's, it's rare. Um, it is permissible to respond amen, during the search. Likewise, if someone hears thun thunder, he may interrupt to recite the blessing, and he may recite the blessing of Asher Yetzav, after relieving himself. If he will not recite it right away, it is likely that he'll forget altogether by the time he finishes the search, right? It happens, middle of the search, you gotta go to the restroom, it's okay. You do, you act regularly, you go to the restroom, you wash your hands after, and then you say, Asher Yatsa, no problem. One started the search. Shh, everyone's quiet. Then he goes from room to room and he search and he check before, uh, under the sofas. And he's really thorough. And after half an hour, he says, oops, I didn't say the blessing. I forgot to say the blessing. He's already in the middle of checking the remit. Now what should we do? Not everybody together, one by one, please. No? 
If someone began searching for Hametz without reciting the blessing, he may still recite it at any time, as long as he has not completed the search. Okay. You know, it's something that we do once a year. So one asks, Rabbi, why, can we do Shechiyanu? Shechiyanu, Vikiyamanu, it's a special bracha. We do over new things, right? Shechiyanu. So, um, the rabbis, the poskim, are debating. Yes to say, not to say. Some hold you should say, some hold you should not say. How we can, uh, our custom is not to say, but how we can fulfill uh, the opinion of those great rabbis that Paskin, you need to say Sheikh Yanu. What do you do? How we can trick the system and still say Sheikh Yanu? No, someone that is creative. Let's see if you're ready for gear, if you're ready for conversion. Let's see. No? Okay. You, you need to think out of the box. You say Shekiano on something else. Oh, on something else. What is it? You buy special fruit, uh, you buy a new shirt, uh, something new. And you say, huh? You're ready. You're ready. Right, right. We do not recite the blessing of Sheikh Yanu over the midst of searching for Hametz. Nevertheless, in several posts, it includes the Pri Hadash. It's a, it's a rabbi uh, that is a posek. Rule that one does, uh, uh, does recite the blessing of Sheikh Yanu when perform this mitzvah. It is recommended to find a new fruit and place it in view when he recite the blessing of al biur chametz, and after after searching for the chametz for a minute or two to recite the blessing of shechianu shechianu vikimanu vikianu asman azeh. Okay, or the fruit, having in mind to cover for the bits of searching for chametz as well, he must not recite this blessing before beginning the search because according to many poskim. Uh, that will be an interruption. You start the search, two, three minutes, give me the fruit, or you don't have to, the fruit is there, say the Baha. After completing the search, he should recite the blessing over eating the fruit and then eat it. Mm. This entire procedure is only an act of piety. Technically, it is not necessary to recite the blessing of Shehechianu at all. Okay? If you want to do that, it would be a great thing to do. So one has more than one house. For you guys, example, you guys own a lot of property, a lot of real estate. You have a lot of houses. And that night, you need to, you're asking yourself, what? Amen. That's it, Amen. of course. Say again, Amen. Um, you're, should I check the other apartment I have? What about the stores that I own? Uh, complex Amen. with my responsibility. Amen. I have more than one house. I have more than one car. Amen. Most of you have more than one car here, right? Mm-hmm. Should I check only one? Should I two? Or okay. Do I have to say uh, a blessing for every house that I go, every car that I check? Right? Mm, no. no? You have more than one car, no? You, you have you have mezuzah in the car, you have mezuzah in the car, no? Ah. I know a guy that have mezuzah in the car. So you would say one blessing, or one so that's what that's what I'm asking. So the halacha says one may search for the chametz in several houses or stores after reciting the blessing one time. One time covers for everything. Even if the buildings are somewhat distant from one another, going from one building to the next is not considered an interruption. If the two buildings are quite distant from one another, the person conducting the search, the searches should recite the blessing over the first house and have in mind uh, uh, specifically that he does not wish this blessing to count for the second building. Then he can recite a second blessing over searching the second building or store. 
problem solved. Okay. Does so that, all your does buildings that apply now. Apply to um, like rental properties or just our personal properties? What do you mean? If you're renting to someone else, it like becomes his like responsibility. Thousands of rental properties. Okay. And I don't go check all of those, but I have my five properties that I own my personal residence. I have them checked every year. That suffices. Well, the five houses that you own are close by? No, I have them in different states, like Aventura, Deal, Malibu, Caymans. Okay. Okay. So that was uh, was uh, what I was about to say. Uh, there's different. I'm going to tell you in general, but then contact me later because that's what I'm, I'm about to say. There's different cases. Uh, in general, if they're close to each other. Now the question is how close? It's a walking distance or driving distance, and so forth. So, on. so uh, uh, text me later, and I will let. You, what's your name? Goy. Goy. Joy. Joy. Okay, Joy. So, in general, um, the answer would be if they are too far from each other, I don't know the distance, uh, it's not your responsibility, especially people renting from you. The, the only question to start is now, you're renting this property, but right now, it's empty, God forbid, for example. Yeah. It's yeah. back yours. It's your responsibility. Then you have to check. But these kind of questions, you can ask me uh, privately, okay? Uh, Thank you. Any more questions about that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, some people, uh, for example, like the question we, we've heard, or, or, or some people have a big house and they have many rooms, or the, the house is too big, or it's not too big, but it's hard for him, for them, for her, to check every room. Some people have two stories, uh, three stories, it takes a long time, and he asks if he have people helping him, meaning uh, family members or a friend, to conduct the search. What about the blessing? Can he use them? Or is the only one that has to do that? So the answer is, what time is it? Oh, wow, wow, wait a minute. It is, uh, if, 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 if it is difficult for one person to search through the entire house by himself, he may bring his family members or friends to join him. The homeowner recites the blessing over the search in their presence, and they should have in mind to fulfill their obligation of reciting the blessing through listening to him, and they must respond, Amen. Then each one goes to search in the part of the house assigned to him. It is forbidden for each one to recite a separate blessing on his own portion of the search. If they did not hear the homeowner recite the blessing, they should not participate in the search, for they will be performing a mitzvah without a blessing. In any event, the homeowner should perform at least some of the search. As our sages taught, this is in Kiddushin, Trinity Kiddushin 41a, quote, a mitzvah is greater when one performing it himself than when one appoints an agent to perform it for him. Okay? So any mitzvah you can do yourself, do it yourself. Okay? Any questions so far? So one has a messenger. That he appointed to check one house. Rabbi. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have a question. Go ahead. It's in regards to um, it's in regards to the rental properties, right? I'm kind of confused on that one there. Okay. If it's why would I check my rental properties if if I'm not living in the rental property and the property is being rented, even if it's my um my bed um. My um, um, what you call it, um, Airbnb property. I'm not living in it. I don't, I don't live in that. So why should I have to go check the chametz in those properties? You only need to check the chametz there if no one is living there slash renting it from you. If it's empty, it means it's back to you. It's yours. It's your responsibility. Okay. If it's rented, you're right. They don't. Have, you don't have to. It's on them. It's actually. 
uh, depends on the time you gave them the key or the time you gave them the permission to live there. And this is something I plan to talk a little bit later. I don't have time right now. So you want to give them as early as you want. So it's going to be their responsibility. Other than that, it's your responsibility to check because it's your house. It's empty. You have to check for it. Okay. If the homeowner appoints a family member or someone other acquaintance to perform the search on his behalf and he does not intend to participate at all, the homeowner should not recite the blessing. Instead, the agent who will perform it should recite the blessing for himself. Okay. Okay. What do you do when you have a rental property in a place there's no Jewish there, there's, there's a, I don't know, it's another country? Okay, you live in Dallas and the property is in Atlanta. And right now, no one is performing the Hamid. What are you going to do? Ask somebody to clean it. Right. So, I'm sorry? First of all, it has to be clean. But if you can't, you can't, what you do is on the selling of Hamid's bill, you, of course, must add that property. Okay, no one is there. So you sell the chametz. Can like, you do the blessing over the phone? No, you cannot do over the phone. You have to do a blessing by yourself. Okay, you can only respond for a blessing you hear over the phone with amen, but you don't fulfill the mitzvah uh, over the phone. You have to do it yourself then. So there's many cases. If you have any further question, as usual, you can just text me and Benzrat Hashem will be uh, answering that question. Next week, oh, uh, we have another class, regular class on Wednesday on talking about the significance of the word chametz and the other forces and going to focus on why we have 10 pieces. What is that corresponding to? What is this power that we are trying to eliminate and we can do that when we do the search for Hamet. Remember we talked about the eclipse today? I hope you did what we've learned to do some uh, psalms while you look the eclipse because it's time of judgment. Okay, time of judgment, you're supposed to say something to protect yourself. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Oh, I mentioned that on Shabbat, on Shabbat class. So some people that we instruct, Baruch Hashem, they look at uh, this great event and they were saying at the same time some psalms because it's time of judgment and you want to protect yourself and your family. I want to wish you guys all the best. We love you all. God bless you with everything you do. We should have great parnasa, great livelihood. God bless you with a good health. Amen. We should see you here, Be'ezrat Hashem, I think the same time. Well, no, a little bit earlier. Next uh, class is on Wednesday. God bless. Any further questions, contact me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.